phase deviation if the ostium primum type of phase d is there because of associated disturbance in the conducting tissue which is located at the level of the av node sometimes there can be an associated uh, complete heart block also can be associated with septum primum type is what need to be remembered so you need to remember av valves septum primum are close to each other if you remember everything else you can be able to answer in the tomorrow's exam in the case of the sinus venosus defect sinus venosus type of asd the p axis just like qrs you have got a p wave axis is leftwards what is the reason generally sa node will be the dictator it will dictate the conduction of the impulse electrical signal into the whole of the atria but here because of a defect which is a little above the level of the sa nodal location the electrical activation will travel in upward direction which leads to development of a leftward deviation is what i want to underscore to all of you so sinus venosus type of asd can have the p axis which is basically leftward directed and generally there is a right axis deviation because the right ventricular hypertrophy and if there is a associated av canal defect in a ostium primum type there can be a superior axis deviation and complete heart block can be associated with the ostium primum type and av canal defect is what you need to basically understand electrocardiographic changes axis changes is one of the favorite question of the examiner any entrance you write in this uh, subcontinent of india for that matter so if you look at the electrocardiogram right ventricular hypertrophy already you are the masters in electrocardiography v1 v2 are basically right sided leads v5 v6 are the left sided leads you don't expect this kind of uh, r wave a positive qrs in the case of the lead v1 and v2 but the presence of it is highly indicative of the presence of the right ventricular hypertrophy in addition to that the t wave inversion which you are seeing in the v1 v2 also is another important indicator for the presence of the right ventricular hypertrophy and because the left atrial blood is shunting into the right atrium the right atrium gets volume overloaded it becomes dilated if the right atrium dilates what is the change in the p wave p becomes peaked so typically peaking will occur if the left atrium become dilated as what you see in the case of the mitral stenosis it becomes m shaped double peak will appear so here what you are seeing in the lead v1 is a prominent uh, p wave tall p wave which is more than 2 to 3 mm is another important indicator in the case of the electrocardiogram chest radiography classically the pulmonary arteries become large do you expect pulmonary oligemia or pulmonary pleura pulmonary pleura is what you basically expect in case of pulmonary stenosis there's a decreased flow so pulmonary oligemia is what you expect there so basically congenital heart disease broad differential diagnosis look at radiograph cardiomegaly is there or not pulmonary artery is prominent or not pulmonary pleura or oligemia so based on these three clues you can basically diagnose the congenital heart disease so radiograph is a, a very important uh, uh, clue for you similarly enlargement of the ra enlargement of the rv and uh, a small aortic knob not a prominent aortic knob what is the reason because the left ventricular blood which is donated by the left atrium is already being stolen by the right atrium hence the aorta is not receiving flow so the aortic knob will not be prominent it will be very small is what need to be remembered if you do the echocardiography you can be able to identify that r a and r v volume overload and you can be able to quantitate it and uh, sometimes sinus venosus type of the asd may not be detected on the echo for that you need to have a better subcostal view in order to identify it is what you have already seen in the earlier echo image echocardiographic appearance in the case of uh, the atrial septal defect the right ventricle into the right atrium and left at ventricle and left atrium between the two the septum is basically defective and if you conduct the doppler you can also observe the flow pattern which is from the right atrium into the left atrium is what need to be remembered so basically 2d echo is like uh, driving a four wheeler you have got four chambers of the heart you just need to know how to move the steering initially you lose control so that's more than uh, uh, enough once uh, about one week 10 days you practice you will start mastering how to report 